think it is James Bond with us who conquered the world. world. Almost, almost. Neil Lawton. What he did. He has a lot of Guinness World Records by breaking adventure. One day he's in Sahara in some fuel car. One day he's reaching South Pole. And I don't know why, but he started his arrival by cricket game. I will ask him about that, why he need that. He's a helicopter pilot. He reached, he reached seven summits. And uh, maybe he's not a real man. We need to check. Is he alive? <laughs> Is he really exists? So it's a Hollywood movie. Happy to see you, Neil. Olga, good afternoon. Very nice to talk to you and to meet you. Very nice to talk to you, dear Neil. Dear Neil, tell me, please, why you receive all these Guinness World Records and what did you do, if you can tell me in details? Why? Why you need to be in Sahara? Why you need to reach seven summits? Why South Pole? You, you want to be where? In the space? Or what's the meaning of all that? <laughs> Very good question. So uh, all my life I have uh, had a passion for adventure, for travel and for sport. And when you get an opportunity uh, to combine all three, that for me is utopia. And so uh, a Guinness World Record is, is merely uh, uh, an opportunity to express yourself, to do something challenging and to have fun with uh, good people that become solid lifelong friends and from those uh, experiences and those people you have um, great trust great friendship and great memories you have a penguin behind you and some champagne does it have some uh, meaning for you or penguin is uh, south pole champagne is celebration there are just a few things i've collected uh, over the years only a couple. I have a big room full of artifacts from around the world. Uh, I love to uh, travel and, and uh, do uh, expeditions with uh, other people. Um, and uh, I collect uh, sort of fun stuff on my travels. And there's a few of them behind. The, uh, the penguin is indeed a representative of the uh, Antarctica and the South Pole. Um, the bottle, I think, was opened in the middle of the uh, Sahara Desert. Uh, off the back of an expedition where we were um, uh, flying uh, the world's first road legal car. A road legal car. What is that? It's flying it, car? It, it means a, a car that you can drive on uh, any roads in uh, the UK or France or Russia. And uh, also it flies. It flies in the air. Tell me, please, Neil, um... After you, you were everywhere, uh, are you feel bored in life? How can you be a father of three kids, as you said, um, if you were uh, like, can you live normal life or for you it's not possible anymore? Uh, no, absolutely incorrect. I, I try and lead a very ordinary, normal life, but sometimes interspersed with some extraordinary experiences. And it's just a question of um, prioritizing and not forgetting that uh, we humans, we like to have challenge, we like to have opportunities to learn, to be curious and to set high, aspiring, challenging and um, aspirational goals. And so I try to be a great father and a good husband, um, but I have to uh, follow my passion, which is to explore, to adventure and to organize and lead expeditions on seven continents by land, sea and air. Wow. When you arrived South Pole, when you reached South Pole, why you start with cricket? You are not Indian. You are not Pakistani to start with cricket. <laughs> why cricket? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, one of the reasons I mentioned at the start, I like to uh, travel, adventure and sport. So when you combine all three, it sometimes looks like a trip I did to Antarctica back in 2012. It was a commemorative trip. Um, if you remember your history, the Norwegian uh, Roald Amundsen was the first to reach the uh, South Pole, followed shortly after, a few weeks later, by a British explorer, a naval commander, and um, uh, Robert Falcon Scott. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the, he and his team perished on the return journey. Very sad. But 100 years later, so in 2012, I led a commemorative trip with uh, 
four uh, four other people, two ladies and and three of us men, and we skied uh, 60 miles, 100 kilometers to get to the South Pole. And what I wanted to do is have a bit of fun and play some sports. And so I organized the first game of cricket at the South Pole. And we had um, we had Russians, we had Australians, we had uh, Frenchmen, um, British, and uh, it was uh, the England team versus the rest of the world. And uh, your listeners, I'm sure, will like to know that England beat the rest of the world by two wickets. <laughs> that is very interesting. Uh, Neil, can you share with us what was the most risky and the dangerous day of your trip? I don't know, was it in South Pole or in Sahara, where you were really afraid for your life and for the life of your team? Well, I've had a few uh, near misses or escapes. Um, I've organized and led six expeditions to Mount Everest. And of course, when you go very high on the mountains in the Himalayas, there's always a bit of a risk. And so my very first expedition to try and climb Everest um, coincided in, unfortunately, the worst storm to hit the mountain in a hundred years. Oh and sadly, God. a lot of people uh, lost their lives and were injured from frostbite. Uh, I was lucky to escape. Um, I spent two nights uh, at 8,000 meters in the death zone during the storm. And so quite lucky, but uh, I had, you know, good background in alpine and mountaineering. And so my team and I, we we escaped unscathed, but not so lucky other people. And then um, uh, my fourth expedition to Everest, um, I was halfway up the mountain again when uh, the worst uh, earthquake struck the region in 2015. So this Everest is not lucky for you, in a way? Well, you, it depends on your outlook. I feel as though I'm lucky. Um, uh, some some would say I was unlucky, but uh, I escaped with my life with these uh, disasters. And um, But the point is, I think when you climb Himalayas, climb big, tall mountains, there is obviously a risk. And I've uh, experienced a few uh, near misses. So uh, probably on the mountains is where, you know, the, the most risk is. After all these difficulties, when you saw that many people are dead and uh, earthquake and the storm, did you have in your mind you want to stop? You don't want to risk your life anymore? I think it's important for people, myself included, to uh, try and park the, uh, the difficult, the obstacles, the dangers, the risk. Whilst it's important to um, look at the mitigating circumstances, to mitigate the risk, to prepare, to train, uh, to psychologically get yourself in the right place. Uh, sometimes um, difficulties uh, and dangers uh, occur. And uh, if you were to stop uh, doing what you're doing because of those risks, unless it's an unfeasible risk or a, a risk that's not worthwhile, and I have turned down expeditions, for example, to uh, K2, which is a very dangerous mountain. Uh, one has to know one's limits, but to actually stop um, uh, and prevent uh, and, and allow the risk or the, the fear to get in your way of progress, I think is not a great thing. I don't encourage it. I try not to follow that myself. Uh, Neil, as a husband and uh, as a father, because uh, it looks like you're Indiana Jones and you're fighting, you're jumping, you're in helicopter, you are commander. Who are you? Are you co giving commands to your wife? You're telling her, who? who? Uh, how, how are you in the house? Uh, I'm subservient. Mm -hmm. uh, when in the house, my, my wife is the, uh, the alpha male. <laughs> I don't believe um, you. No, I promise you. I is do she a Schwarzenegger or how, how can she be alpha male? What do you mean? Well, you are things. alpha man already. How can be? Who is alpha female? How <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but uh, it's a serious point. No, I think uh, it's important, certainly equality, certainly in marriage, in the, in the house. Um, but she has she she takes a lead role in uh, organizing uh, our uh, family affairs, our holidays, the children's education. I support her in uh, that lead role. And I think it's really important to work out for everybody and everybody's relationships has to work out uh, 
uh, an equal balance. So it is important. Yes, when I'm on uh, adventurous expedition, when I'm at work, uh, I take the lead. But at home and uh, uh, with the family life, I take very much a back, uh, back seat and a subservient role. Is she as uh, adventurous as you? She's also going with you on expeditions or she's waiting for you peacefully in the house? She occasionally comes on expeditions, not many. Uh, she doesn't like snakes and spiders, so that counts out the jungle. Uh, she doesn't like getting hot and sweaty in the desert, so that counts out the, the desert. She has climbed uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, and so she's quite good in the mountains. And uh, I will be taking uh, her and all my three children, now that they're teenagers, to, uh, to the Himalaya and to go and uh, see uh, the big mountains of the Himalayas next year. Uh, are you respected by your children because you are doing such amazing trips? Well, it's difficult when uh, children are, uh, are teenagers, they're a bit naughty, aren't they? My youngest, um, who just uh, took a, a mock exam, uh, blamed her D grade in maths on me. So I get a lot of blame for um, being uh, a little bit behind in the, 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 the grading system. But... Um, it's, it's not the most important thing in, in life, I think. I keep telling them nobody uh, in my life, and I've achieved a few things, uh, work in, uh, in, my, in my career and stuff. No single person has ever asked me what grade in maths I got uh, for a job interview. What is your biggest uh, achievement for yourself? What is, your, Neil, you are the most proud of? Well, I'm very proud of... Uh, um, bringing three uh, beautiful and talented children into the world, number one. Uh, number two, personally, I think um, the, the struggle and the, the strain and the risk of uh, standing on top of the world on Mount Everest was, was certainly a, a memorable moment for me personally. And thirdly, uh, you know, one of the military uh, regiments I, I had to uh, pass a a uh, very difficult selection process. So I'm most proud of uh, joining a, a, a special forces regiment. Um, as a peaceful person, now forgetting about military things, what do you think that um, all nations, I don't know, maybe it's utopia, maybe it's not possible to be friends. What it's necessary to be, to be friends that all nations can live, because I'm a romantic person, I'm a director of the movies. So you can allow me to do this, that all nations can live in peace. Or you think it's not possible for human beings. We are animals and we need to kill each other and take territories. And men will fight for the most beautiful women since the time of Greek, of Rome. And our role is to fight each other and we are animals. Or you believe that humanity is a little bit above that. What is your opinion? My opinion is that it's uh, a very difficult question that um, somebody who is not very intelligent like me uh, will find difficult to answer. I think the my, what I have probably most uh, more than most people traveled the world. And what I've discovered is that on a one to one uh, le level, one to one basis, particularly when you're a visitor in other people's countries and you have a smile on your face and you're not a threat, then people will help you and they will look after you and they will feed you and they will buy you a drink. Um, and so on a, an individual basis, 99% of people are friendly, helpful and loving. It's just, I think, when we get to the, the geopolitical level where, you know, territory, where power, where strategy, where money uh, starts to erode that, uh, that love, that respect, and that trust. And it's a, a real shame uh, to me that the people in power seem to have this uh, hell bent on uh, those uh, worst human traits. Neil, and my final question to you, as a person who risked your life, who saw the world, who were in the desert, who were on the mountains, who saw up, who saw down, who was in the heat, who was in the cold, 
how you will recommend to people who are in distress now, who are hidden heroes, who cannot relieve this pain and to become real heroes. They're afraid of news. They're afraid of pandemic. They're afraid that they will lose their job, that they're afraid that there will be hunger. Uh, how to survive that stress? The thing I would tell those people is to be brave. Um, there's a, a quote, um, who dares wins? Try uh, wherever possible to uh, find your passion, find your dream, uh, take a risk, be, be a little bit brave. And the one thing I have discovered in, in my life, uh, not just for myself, but the people that I have uh, got to know and, and to respect and love, is this, that all of us, we humans, uh, are incredible. And we can achieve far more than we perhaps at first think that we can. And, uh, and so uh, set, a, set your dreams big, uh, create a strategy and be daring and, and go for it. Be daring, be brave. You inspired me a lot, Neil, and I want you to live till 120 years. What do you think? <laughs> is it enough? I think 90 is fine for me. Thank you. Oh, no. Okay, 120, because you are very fit, very strong. And thank you for being that positive. I see that you love your family, you love your wife, three kids, and you love these people with whom you travel, and also these people whom you're meeting. And thank you for you choosing to be a speaker and to share all your adventures, because not everybody can afford, and not everybody is brave. But what you said be daring and put your dreams higher because you are people are incredible amazing don't put small goals don't put because it's not interesting dream like neil lawton thank you so much for being with us you inspired me okay, and, thank uh, you so much and you're amazing too <laughs> how do you know